Happy New Year. Welcome to month number one of the Cup Tasters membership. Today, I'm really excited to taste two very special coffees with you from the Worka Chalbesa processing site in Southern Ethiopia. When you first looked at these two bags of coffee from your box, you might have been wondering if we sent you two bags of the same coffee. But on closer inspection, perhaps you saw that one of these coffees is indicated as a dry process. So what does that mean? And what's the difference between the dry processed Worka Chalbesa and the other Worka Chalbesa that was also in your box? What does processing have to do with the flavors that we detect when we're tasting coffees comparatively? And what can a better understanding of processing do to add to our enjoyment of different flavors in the cup? As you can see, I've gone ahead and set up our cup tasting for today. And if you have any questions about how to do that or need to review any of the details, you can always refer back to the video that we included as a resource to accompany your welcome box. You can find that on the resource page that accompanies your membership. But for today, I've got the two coffees, one in each cup, 13 grams of ground coffee weighed out into each cup, and I've set them up with the Worka Chalbesa wet process on my left and the Worka Chalbesa dry process on my right. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about and experience in the cup tasting is an evaluation of the dry fragrance. So that just refers to the aromatic qualities that we observe when the coffee is freshly ground and before we've added water. And before I jump into evaluating the fragrance, I just wanna underline the fact that throughout all the stages of the tasting, whatever impressions that you get from your palate as we're tasting these coffees are entirely valid. So you may find as you're tasting these coffees with me that you get really similar tasting notes to the ones that I experience when I'm tasting the coffees. And if so, that's great, we're really calibrated. But if you don't, I wanna underline the fact that that is an equally valid experience. Everybody brings a different palette to a coffee tasting, and all those palettes are entirely valid. So let's dive into these coffees, starting here on my left with the Worka Chalbesa wet process. When I'm smelling this sample, I'm thinking of a couple different things, and those sort of correlate to sections on our cupping sheet. So on one hand, I'm thinking about the quality that is sort of alluded to by this slider right under fragrance and aroma on the sheet, the complexity scale. So complexity can have different layers of intensity. You may smell a coffee and immediately think of 50 tasting notes, and that's usually an indication of a really complex coffee. You may smell a coffee that doesn't have quite the same diversity of different tasting notes that your mind immediately thinks of. And that can be an equally amazing coffee, but just not as complex. So when I smell this first coffee, the Worka Chalbesa wet process, there's a lot of complexity. And that complexity is presented in a really mild and nuanced way. I think some of the qualities that immediately pop into my mind when I smell the dry fragrance are brown sugar, black tea qualities that are verging on citrusy and floral, so sort of like bergamot, and maybe a hint of some other citrus, maybe lemon peel. It smells really good. Moving on to our second sample, the work at Chalbesa dry process, let's see what we get. Wow. So on the nose, immediately this one is jumping even further on the complexity scale. There's so many qualities on the nose that make me think of lots of different types of fruit. All kinds of different types of berries. Once again, maybe some citrus, some stone fruit, maybe something melony. And there's a wonderful chocolatey sweetness on the nose that I'm really hopeful we're going to experience in the cup as well. So compared to the wet process, maybe even more complexity in terms of the dry fragrance and a lot of intense fruitiness right from the beginning. 
this stage, we've prepared the two samples of coffees and we're just waiting for them to cool down a little bit before we can move forward through the other categories on the cupping sheet and evaluate the sensory qualities of these coffees in the cup. While they cool, I thought that I would tell you a little more about Worka Chalbesa, the place in southern Ethiopia where these coffees were produced. Worka Chalbesa is the name of a very small neighborhood in southern Ethiopia. The neighborhood is surrounded by many, many small coffee farmers. And I emphasize small here because it tells you a lot about how coffees are actually produced in the region. By contrast to a place like Colombia, where it would be much more common for you to find coffees that are named after the actual farmer, in Ethiopia, that's considerably more rare. And the reason is that most of the coffee farmers in Ethiopia do not produce enough coffee to be presented as a single lot. It's much more common for a whole community of farmers to bring their own very, very small harvests to a neighborhood washing station, at which point all of those small deliveries are blended together as a community lot. Washing stations, in many cases, are not owned by the actual coffee farmer. They're usually either owned privately or by a farmer's cooperative, which often would have members numbering in the hundreds of coffee farmers. Work at Chalbesa is a privately owned washing station. It's owned by Snap Specialty Coffee, which is an exporter based in Addis Ababa, owned and operated by Neguse Dibala. Neguse made a name for himself as an importer of computer parts in Addis Ababa, and a little bit later in his career, added coffee to the portfolio. Snap, in a relatively short period of time, has built a reputation for itself as the source of many of the most stunning and incredible washed coffees in all of Ethiopia. And, as we're tasting today, they also produce some really stellar dry process coffees. During the coffee harvest at work at Chalbesa, coffee cherry is picked by hand by these smallholder farmers and then delivered to the washing station, at which point each individual farmer's delivery is weighed. The point of that is to make sure that they get paid for the volume that they deliver. And at this stage, there's usually quality controls in place as well to ensure that the cherry is as uniformly ripe as possible because there's a direct correlation between the sweetness and flavor complexity that we enjoy in the cup and uniform picking at peak ripeness. Once delivery has been completed and weighing and accounting have all been taken care of, processing can begin. We're gonna talk a little bit more about what processing actually means, but for now, let's resume the tasting as I think the cups have cooled to a perfect temperature. The next two categories that I want to talk about as we continue our cup tasting are acidity and sweetness. I wanna talk about them together because they really, really work hand in hand. Generally speaking, I think that acidity and sweetness in my favorite coffees are both really centrally involved in the flavor balance that I find particularly enticing. So let's taste. Starting once again with the Worka Chalbesa wet process. Thinking once again with the cupping sheet, starting with this intensity kind of slider here, for me, the acidity of the wet process is just past the middle. It's got a perfect acidity for this coffee, given that the overall profile of this coffee is mild, delicate, and kind of tea-like. It's got a very mild but present acidity that I find incredibly refreshing. In terms of the specific qualitative descriptors, I find the acidity very citrusy. Moving on to the dry process, I think once again, we get those berries that we noticed on the dry fragrance right away. If you think about bright raspberry jam, 
There's an acidity that is not in your face, but absolutely present. I think a word that comes to my mind when I think about this type of acidity is juicy. I think this coffee is really juicy, and I think the acidity is a big part of it. But what about sweetness? I think in both cases, the sweetness and acidity of these coffees offers a really nice balance. But I think the sweetness of the dry process, once again, with all of those fruit qualities that we notice aromatically, is right out in front. The sweetness of the wet process is maybe a little more integrated and a little more balanced. I get a gentle, fresh raspberry sweetness in this cup. But those berry notes have moved into kind of jam or even kind of raspberry sherbet territory in this second cup. It's really wild and it's really delicious. Mm. Maybe, maybe a little bit of grape jelly as well. The next category for us to talk about is flavor. And you'll see on your cupping sheet that we actually have two scales for evaluation in addition to qualitative descriptors. Let's talk a little bit about those. The first one is complexity, and the second one is clarity. When describing the difference that I perceive between flavor complexity and flavor clarity when tasting coffee, Sometimes I like to think about photography as an analogy of the difference. So you could have a photograph that has lots of different content in it, but the entire photograph is not entirely in focus. That's kind of analogous to what I think of in terms of a cup of coffee that has lots of flavors, but not a ton of flavor clarity. On the flip side, you could have a photograph that has relatively little subject matter, but the entire photograph is in very sharp focus. That is comparable to me to a coffee that is maybe not really high on the flavor complexity scale, but has really excellent flavor clarity. And all of the above can be really enjoyable coffees, but that's kind of what we're getting at when we're trying to evaluate the differences. So let's see how these coffees kind of fall on those scales. Starting with the wet process. This is a really special coffee because for me, it's pretty high on the complexity scale and it's really high on the clarity scale. There's a beautiful spectrum of flavors, citrusy, raspberry, browning sugar, black tea, and for me, they're all in really beautiful focus. Moving to the dry process. Incredibly impressive flavor complexity. Just absolutely gobs of layers of fruity flavors in the cup. But for me, the clarity is not quite as impressive as the wet process. So I would make the biggest contrast on the actual clarity front between these two. Both very complex coffees, but I think flavor complexity is more emphasized in the dry process and flavor clarity is more emphasized in the wet process. We've talked about a lot of flavors that we've been enjoying in these cups, and I don't think we need to talk about too many more of them, but certainly as the coffee's cool, I get a little more in the way of peachy and berry notes in the wet process, and more in the way of chocolatey sweetness in the dry process. final category for us to talk about is finish. Sometimes you'll also hear the word aftertaste used to describe this part of a tasting. I'm going to start by just having one more sip. I think the finish of the wet process is magical. So you'll see on the scale, we've described finish in terms of length and Lots of different lengths of finish can be really enjoyable in coffee, but in a coffee like this that's delicate and tea-like, I really look for a coffee that has a sweet and long lingering finish 
And the work at Shelbessa wet process is exactly that for me. I get that gentle raspberry sweetness and tea-like bergamot florality in a beautifully lingering way. Something I really enjoy about this coffee. Moving over to the dry process, you get all of that sweet, juicy fruit up front, but for me, the length of the finish is a little shorter. Not in an unpleasant way, but I think the finish is less exemplary compared to the wet process. I was really excited to share these two coffees for the January tasting box because I think they offer an amazing contrast and illustration of the impact that coffee processing approach has on flavor. Reminding ourselves that these coffees come from the exact same place. It's the same varieties harvested from the same community of farmers in the same hyper-specific region of Ethiopia processed at the exact same washing station at the same time by the same team of people. So that means that with all of those variables being the same and balancing that with how different they taste in the cup, it illustrates how impactful processing can be on what we taste. So let's talk just a little bit more about specifically what happened with these two processing approaches. Starting with the wet process, and as you look at various coffee descriptions throughout specialty coffee, you may also see wet process described as washed process as well. With the wet process, freshly harvested coffee cherry, shortly after delivery, goes straight into a pulping machine. Essentially, that machine just strips the fruit away from the coffee seeds that are on the inside. Most coffee cherries have two seeds. That's why a coffee bean has a flat side, because those two seeds face each other on the flat side. So rounded on the outside, flat on the inside. Going through the pulper removes the fruit, at which point those freshly harvested coffee seeds go usually into a tank of water where a fermentation stage occurs. The reason for that is that when a coffee seed comes out of the fruit, it's covered with a sticky layer of mucilage. What a beautiful word, right? Mucilage involves a lot of sugars, which naturally occurring yeasts and bacteria eat away over time. It makes it easier to clean those coffee seeds after the fermentation stage. And that usually occurs in washing channels. So agitation with water strips the very last of that sticky mucilage layer away from the seeds, at which point they're beautifully cleaned and ready to be spread on raised beds to dry in the sun. When drying is complete, the coffee is very close to the stage where it can be transported to a dry mill where it goes through its last quality control steps, at which point it's ready to be exported and sent to a roaster like Passenger. By contrast to the wet process coffee, when the same coffee cherry is delivered to work at Chalbessa, the dry processed coffee goes completely outside of the pulpy machine and directly to the drying beds. So as the coffee is drying, the fruit is drying around the coffee seeds. There's prolonged contact between the fruit and the seed that's eventually gonna be the bean that we roast and brew. And I think it's just very compelling and simple to think about that contact translating to very fruit forward flavors. Put another way, when we're drinking the dry process coffee, we're tasting a much clearer representation of the coffee cherry itself in the cup. Whereas with the wet process coffee, you're tasting a cleaner, brighter representation of those same coffee seeds. Thanks so much for joining me for this tasting and exploration of the impact of coffee processing in the cup. I really enjoyed this tasting and I'm really excited for the coffees that we have lined up for the coming months. We included plenty of coffee in each monthly shipment so that you can enjoy a cup tasting of this pair of coffees multiple times. But you should also have enough coffee left over that if you would like to, you can enjoy brewing it at home as well. We would also encourage you to reach out and let us know how your tastings go. 
we'd love to hear from you. It'd be really fun to hear your tasting notes, hear how you found the coffees, hear how the contrast presented to you between the wet process and the dry process, or any other feedback that you have after tasting the coffees in the cup tasting format. We're really excited for what's to come, and we'll speak to you again in February.